before, before all of these considerations, and maybe above all of them, it's very important to de-theologize the discussion. Theologizing socio-political problems is, by definition, contradictory. Europe, please, open your heart, open your eyes, open your mind, open your heart, and rethink yourself as much as an Arabo Muslim <coughs> to rethink. <coughs> Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> good morning. Uh, just to give a summary about my, my opening speech last night, and maybe I can add some other points I didn't have time to, uh, to go on. Uh, at the beginning, I have to, uh, to mention something that my uh, colleague, Qureishi, who is here, reminded me yesterday that I didn't talk about the media, the role of, of the media in presenting Islam in a very, very negative way and avoiding as much as possible to present ordinary Muslims who are living everywhere in every European cities and who are fully integrated. Uh, they go to school, they go to work, but they are, not, they are not mentioned. Only the people who are mentioned with long beard persons like Hamza, the Egyptian in, uh, in England, and other people. We understand that the media is interested more in the man who bites the dog than in the dog who bites a human. Uh, but unfortunately, the media is not really presenting you know, the rational voices of European scholars when they talk about Islam. The emphasis is always on those scholars or intellectuals who would like to defame Islam and to insult Muslims. But there are so many rational voices. I know a lot of European friends, but they are not presented in the media as much as the ordinary Muslim are not presented in the in, Maybe they are, treat, they are treated like Muslims. But anyway, this is a very important point, the media role. Another point that I didn't you know, go on into yesterday the conflict in the Middle East, that's very, very, very hot issue to be debated. I wish uh, 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 Professor Robin Amun would come, but anyway, the, the, the function or the role of the opening speech is just to, to open up the issues that are going to be unfolded during the entire conference. And in this respect, I started yesterday talking about Islam in Europe, Islam as part of Europe. Since the 8th century, it is not a new phenomenon. 
It is not a phenomenon that started in the 19th or the 20th century. I mean, the, the Islamic empire or the Arabic empire was built on the expense of the Byzantine empire. So Muslims and non-Muslims are living together most of, most of the time. Uh, Islam in Europe, Muslims in Europe, they are not going anywhere. Muslim, whether they are immigrant or European Muslims, and we have millions of European Muslims, white-skinned European Muslims, they are here. We have to deal with this phenomena, the, cha the, de the demographic change of Europe, the cultural change of Europe is not dealt with in an effective way. Islam has to be accepted as part of the European identity, not as a religion, because Christianity is not accepted as a religion, Judaism is not accepted as a religion, but as a, a, a long history, a long history of culture and achievement in philosophy, in theology, in art, in literature, in food, for example. Okay. You enjoy the food of the world, but you don't enjoy having good contact with the people who produce this food of the world, Turkey, for example. We all enjoy the Turkish food, but we don't like Turkey to be part of Europe. Okay. Uh, so this, this was my, my first point, and I tried to, to show the deep relationship between what we think the Muslim world and Europe. And this deep relationship is still very, very alive. I, as a scholar, learned a lot from my European colleagues who produced books about the Quran, about the Prophet, about Islam. Okay, I learned a lot. I'm asking European scholars, especially German scholars, through this conference, to be more engaged in the, the real serious discussion about Islam. Because they are interested, for example, in the history of the Quran, in the ge genealogy of the Quran, in the structure of the Quran, in the periodization of the Quran, which is very good. But when it comes to the meaning of the Quran, they keep distance. They said, this is your problem, Muslims. No, it's not our problem, it's the world problem now. And we should be engaged in the meaning of the Quran and the meaning of, of Islam in general. Okay, as long as Islam is part of Europe, the, 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 the mission is not the mission of only Muslim scholars. It should be the mission of all the scholars, all the serious scholars. Uh, I talked also about the counterproductive discourse against Islam, and I don't have to repeat what I said yesterday. I added just today the media. And I had yesterday quoted two testimonies from two European Muslims, an Egyptian German Muslim and a French Moroccan uh, Muslim. And it shows very clearly how much these young Muslims, whether they are immigrant or born in Germany, because this Egyptian was born in German. He doesn't speak Arabic. He didn't learn Arabic. He read the Quran in German or in English. But when he talks with Egyptians, he is German. When he talks with the German, he is Egyptian. He is nowhere. He is in between. Okay. It's, it's very good to be in between, but for, not for young people. I am in between, but I enjoy being in between. Because I'm a scholar. I am an adult. I understand what does it mean to be in between. You have the privilege of being in between. But for young people, this could be lead to a catastrophic situation. And this catastrophic situation could lead those, those young, young people to, be, to accept and to internalize the most radical discourse and to be in favor of terrorism. This is something we have to deal with. And then I, I, I talked about the problem of identity. What is identity? Sometimes I feel identity is a poison. Because why you, you need to identify yourself, it's against, against the other. You would like to, to make a distance. Identity could not be really realized unless we understand that it is a mirror. I look to your eye, I look to you, and I discover myself. You are my mirror. 
therefore my identity could not be fully understood without you. Okay, this is not only in the personal level, but also in the cultural and civilization level. Examples I give today, without Islam coming into Europe in the eighth century, Christianity would not have been reformed. Without the West coming to the Muslim world in the 18th, in the 19th centuries, Islam would not have been reformed. Reformation is looking to your image into the mirror of the other and realizing how ugly you are and how much change you need. And this comes only in, in this kind of conversation or dialogue or even conflict. I mean, how much the Israelis and the Palestinians who are fighting every day know about each other rather than an Arab or a Muslim in Indonesia know about, about the Israelis? I'm not, I'm not asking people to fight in order to, to know each other, but I'm talking about the contact. And we have here to talk about identity as not a well-defined topic. It's a very, very complicated topic, and we have to accept this complication of identity. Even when we speak about a Dutch person, what is Dutch means? I mean, are all the Dutch persons I, 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 you know, identical? No, we have Dutch persons who believe in the literal meaning of the Bible, who believe in, in all the, the mythologies of religion. We have Dutch people who are atheists, who don't believe in anything religious. So, but this is, but so we have so many identities. If we speak about Dutch, German, British, American, it's more complicated now in the world in which the composition of the world is more complicated than ever. And then I, I came to fundamentalism, which is not a European problem. Fundamentalism, terrorism, whatever you can call it, which is not a European problem. It's a world problem. It started in the Middle East. I have to confess, it started in my own country, in Egypt, in 1928. So it's a, we, how, how can we deal with, 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 with fundamentalism? There are two ways. Either to think that they understand the religion very, go, very good, and we have to fight religion, the religion to which they make reference. Or we have to analyze their rhetoric in using religion in order to fight to fight political issues, to fight social issues, to solve other issues. We have to disconnect their reliance on religion and to see the deep root of the problem they are talking about. In my own country, I understand very good that fundamentalism, radicalism did not start as a religious phenomena. Terrorism, violence started in Egypt as a social phenomena. But everyone was closing his eye about, about violence when it is social. But the governments became alert when it became a religious issue and it touched some political leaders in Egypt in the 70s. We have to deal with radical discourse, fundamentalism, in so many levels of analysis. Analyzing their re rhetoric about religion, not to take it seriously, but to analyze it, critically to analyze it, and we can understand the tactics that they use, how they employ religion. Is it, is it the meaning they try to impose on religion, okay, is a meaning of a people who are suffering from so many problems, okay? They are looking for justice, absolute pure justice that does not exist in our world, and they think it happened. Somewhere in the 7th century, it happened. Of course, it did not happen. Neither in the 7th century or the 8th century. But anyway, re, the, dealing, de, dealing with, 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 with radicalism intellectually, dealing with inter, uh, uh, radicalism politically, but not dealing with, 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 with radicalism as only a security problem or as only a theological problem. Dethelogization of the discussion about radicalism, about terrorism, is very, very essential. Because without this dethelogization, we can all get into theologization of the problem. 
When we talk about the problem of women in Islam, we look to the Quran. When we talk about the problem of Muslim in Europe, we look to the Quran. And sometimes you look to the Quran without understanding what kind of text is this. How this text was historically uh, uh, formed. What is the meaning of this text? So this is, this is, this is the, the issues I presented, I presented yesterday. And probably I would like to add uh, today uh, something I didn't have time uh, uh, to mention yesterday. And I will put it in very small, sent simple sentences about the Quran, about Islam. The Quran is not a book of law. The Quran is not a book of history. The Quran is not a book of philosophy. Even the Quran is not a book of theology. Theologization of the Quran happened in the third century Islamic era in the 10th century. And we Muslims read the Quran in the light of the late theological reformation. And I am trying my best to read the Quran before this theology. Theology is the institutionalization of religion, where there is power, authority against the other, always. Theology, whether it is Christian theology, Islamic theology, is a structure of ideas to build walls against the other. That's how Islamic theology became against the Jews and the Christian. That's how Christian theology at the beginning became against the Jews. So we have to be very careful, not only in reading the Quran, but in reading any scripture out, 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 outside history. Reading the Quran is, a, is, is not an easy, an easy job. Reading Islamic tradition, Sharia, which everyone is using. Sharia, what does Sharia mean? I don't understand what Sharia mean. And I claim I'm a scholar that have been for more than 50 years in this field. Sharia means what? Sharia is a, is, is, is a term which is used by philosophers like Averroes, Ibn Rushd, to say this is the entire structure of Islam. Sharia is used by the Sufis as counter to the truth, which is the spiritual experience. Islam has been reduced to Sharia, which is not legal code nowadays, and all other aspects of Islam are almost forgotten not by European, but by Muslims as well. This is what I have to add today. Thank you very much. And I wish all the issues will be unfolded during the conference. Thank you.